Gumball, check. Regular show, check. Adventure time, done. Up next on the Cartoon Network chopping block, Steven Universe. Steven may shoot magical powers from his belly button, but how equipped is this gifted boy at practicing medicine? We'll be the judge of that. But before we get into it, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Jordan Wagner. If you enjoy the educational reaction videos and other stuff that you see here on this channel, please smash that subscribe button and turn your bell notifications on. That way you learn when I post a new video. Let's dive right in. How would you like your magical spit administered today? Ah, magical geez, uh, spit? The not kissing one? You got it. Oh, nice. He's got gloves on, which is good. Minus the fact that then the mouth is one of the dirtiest places. That's so gross. Oh, he's got healing power. Man, what kind of enemies does the mayor have to keep you landing in my office? Do we have healing powers like that? I wish. That's classified information, nurse citizen universe. Okay, well, try not to classify too hard out there. Oh. Don't forget your lollipop. Yeah! Modern Western medicine. We have fluids, antibiotics, but you have to have to realize any single medicine that we give also has a negative effect on our body. If the positive effects of the medication significantly outweigh the negatives, we give it. But opposite that, we don't. Maybe you should see a doctor. My mom could see you at the hospital. Well, is it some sort of weird crystal that's causing all his weird growing? Or is it his pituitary gland that's causing him to have some acromegaly? Or whatever. Let's see what the doctor does. Let's start with your symptoms. Ear temperatures like that, digital, eh, not so good. The wand, not so good. The best temperature, unfortunately, is an internal temperature reading, which is typically done rectally. Everybody doesn't want that. So we do it under the tongue. Hmm. Mild fever. Fever typically is 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius. Fever or not a fever is really not much of a mild fever. Glowing pink color to skin. In real life, we actually have different things that actually do change our skin color. Somebody who's got cirrhosis, liver disease, hepatitis, anything really related to the liver and dysfunctions of it, bilirubin goes up and your skin starts turning yellow. So if you notice anybody who is yellow, the whites of their eyes are turning yellow, tell them to go get it checked out. <laughs> Whoa. Hmm. Nice good old stethoscope. What the doctor is doing is using the blood pressure cuff and putting the stethoscope on the artery below it. So what happens is you can blow it up and without having to use a machine to calculate it, you can actually listen to when the pulse disappears and comes back and get your systolic reading off of that. Ah. <sighs> Blood pressure is high. We get blood pressure readings that are high when your arm is contracted. So if you're contracting your arm and making a fist or like flexing your muscle against the blood pressure cuff, it's gonna give you an elevated blood pressure. It's not gonna give you a true reading. Probably what happened in this situation. We'll just need to run some more tests. Get undressed and let's get you into a hospital gown. Is that one of those blue things that doesn't cover your butt? Yes, now let's <laughs> yeah. get started. It will cover your butt if you tie it appropriately and have everything cinched up. There's so many people that come in and actually put it around backwards, kind of awkward for everybody. The open side goes to the back. So this is a typical human skeleton. And this is your chart. Definitely a human skeleton. There's a clear history of numerous fractures, like here on the skull. The x-ray is showing these fracture lines. You could have maybe a little bit more density or lack of density in certain areas. You also have to think that the skull itself has suture lines where our skulls were growing as our brains were growing and then eventually fused. You've recovered physically, but have you recovered mentally? You think there's something wrong with my brain? Not wrong. It's that adverse childhood experiences or childhood trauma can have a lasting impact on how your body responds to stress. This doctor is having a good conversation, talking to this kid about how past injuries and events could then shape your mentation and your mental health to where it is today. A lot of times to deal with that, we need to unpackage things that we've hidden or don't realize from the past and kind of deal with it and do our best to kind of address it, move on, make new, good, positive thoughts. When humans are in crisis, the brain releases the hormone cortisol. Your heart races, your Stress muscles hormone, tense. Cortisol. I wonder if your body is reacting to a gem equivalent of cortisol. It's a stress hormone, so if it's not appropriately acting, your body doesn't have good defense mechanism in those moments versus if it's overreacting, it can send your body into a whole nother realm of things. You know, we do test it at the hospital. Adrenal crises, you know, sepsis. What is it, Amethyst? I just miss you, man. I haven't seen you for like 11 minutes. <laughs> Steven! I shouldn't have overbooked my schedule. <laughs> no!
He syncopized, he passed out. It typically has to do with lack of blood flow to the brain. And how does that happen? Multiple different reasons. Most commonly it's dehydration. Sometimes it's something called a vasovagal event or you have a cardiac arrhythmia where you decrease blood flow and you fall to the ground. So we always worry about head injury, cervical spine fracture. Most people wake up and they get back up really fast and then they pass out again. I always tell people you gotta stay lying down, stay there for a little while, relax, there's no rush. Hey kids, don't let this oh. happen to you. Always try to manage your time wisely. This is correlating it to work, fighting a little bit more off than you can totally chew. We always wanna help everybody. We want to see as many patients as possible. Literally, I'm at work and I'm running around seeing 10 to 15 patients at once, lying around nonstop. You can't be everywhere at once. Don't pull a Steven, am I right? It's a little too small for his head. Appropriate to protect your noggin, wear a helmet, it's cool, there's so many out there, but make sure that it fits appropriate. It's cool to wanna help people, but it's also cool to just say you're too busy. Who are you talking to now? <laughs> you have to also worry about the physical and the mental health of your healthcare providers, because if they go and they go and they're burning themselves down both ends of the candle, eventually they're not gonna be able to function and work and provide the best care that you can. Sometimes you just have to say no. It doesn't look like a car accident. What the heck? You didn't find an ID? This happens more often than not almost every day. People get dropped off the hospital. They're altered. They can't tell us a story. Friends drop overdoses off. Nobody has ID on them, so we don't know who they are, their age, their medical history, nothing. So we have to piece it all together with physical exam, blood work, imaging, and kind of figure out and hopefully get to the bottom of it and that the person is safe and okay. Okay now. Very rarely do you actually have to use a stethoscope. You're hooked up to a cardiac monitor, you're hooked up to a pulse ox machine. We're able to see the heartbeat, we're able to see your oxygen saturation, your breathing, but the stethoscope is actually good for hearing murmurs, abnormal heartbeats, also really good to hear the different sounds of the lung, make sure that there are lung sounds. You can hear lack of lung sounds, it could be a pneumothorax. There's different things you can hear with a, the stethoscope, but outside of that, it's pretty limited. What's she doing? She's probably checking their vitals. Vital signs basically are you know, heart rate, blood pressure, respiratory rate, temperature, and actually sometimes they say the fifth vital sign is pain scale. Hmm. No heartbeat. <laughs> No heartbeat means you're dead. But we saw this body moving, so obviously something's going on. Cheap hospital budgets. <laughs> so we do have stethoscopes that the hospital sometimes will provide us, but they're the ones you throw out. I use my own, we clean it every time we see the patient, and you always tap it to make sure that it's working. If you don't hear something, you just grab and feel a pulse somewhere else to see if the patient is alive. Oh, he can't take a day off, can he? You! Jewel. <laughs> It's my other patient. What are you doing out of bed? So right away when that happens, you call Cole Gray. Patients like missing, you need security to help, mobilize a lot of people because you, you, know, you shouldn't be one-on-one. -on -one. Patients out of the room, something bad could potentially happen. That's not a patient. <laughs> Gosh. One, you got these crazy creatures, and then you got this one creature that's got how many ever arms. I've actually had patients that have multiple extra toes or fingers, or they even the opposite, where people have what's called syndactyly, where they're actually like fused together. This is more of an extreme depiction of it. You don't know me at all. You still haven't even noticed my glasses. What's wrong with your glasses? They don't have lenses anymore. I haven't needed actual glasses for almost a year. What? Your eyesight just magically got better? Yep. Yes! Hilarious that the mom's a doctor and doesn't even notice what's going on with the kid, right? Somebody's wearing glasses without lenses, they're not reflecting light, so obviously you should be able to see that. Ugh, there's no time for this! Ready? Drop the bubble. Oh, let's see. Nice. Can like a single shot of a sword slice through a human being? If it's super sharp and the person doing the slicing has like the best technique and super strong, potentially yes. These aren't injuries that we see at the hospital. Usually if we see like a knife or a sword injury, it's usually like partially through something or sliced, but not typically through bone. The only time I've ever seen really bone injuries are typically big machines, car accidents, and typically it's actually when the force causes the, the bones to actually snap. Super interesting, super cool Steven Universe. I liked it, I need to watch more of this. Some of the cool medical things in here and trying to get like the magical 
stones involved and trying to dissect the medicine from it. Very interesting. If you guys liked my reaction to this, check out this playlist right here. And as always, subscribe, turn your bell notifications on, hit that like button. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.